All right, today we're going to be looking at section 6.1, <clears throat> and this is uh, discrete random variables. Um, these are the objectives. Uh, distinguish be between discrete and continuous random variables. Identify discrete probability distributions. Uh, graph discrete probability distributions. Compute and interpret the mean of a discrete random variable. Interpret the mean of a discrete random variable as an expected value and then compute the standard deviation of a discrete random variable. So <clears throat> these are the learning objectives. Um, not all of these may appear on the homework but it is important to at least go over all of them so at least be aware of that. Alright so let's look at the definitions first. So in the green boxes you definitely want to pay attention to these definitions um, what a random variable is because you will always see some sort of vocabulary um, at the beginning of each section. So you got random variable, you have discrete and continuous. These are the most important. So discrete random variable is finite or countable number of values. So what I normally say is whole numbers. So when I, when I think discrete, I'm thinking it can only be whole numbers. So for example, if I said how many family members do you have, you would either have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you know, some whole number. You wouldn't say I have uh, 5.3 family members. So it's only going to be a whole number. Um, continuous has infinitely many values. Um, usually when I think of continuous, I think of decimal points or parts. Um, it can be breaking down into something smaller than one, like a whole unit. So money is an example, like you could have whole dollars or you could have dollars and some change. Um, same thing with time. You have hours. Hours can be broken down to minutes and seconds. So if what you're counting can be broken down into parts. Um, I would classify that as continuous. If it cannot be broken down, it's only whole numbers, it's discrete. So that's going to be the, the big takeaway I would want you guys to know. Um, you see some examples, and we talk about what a probability distribution is. <clears throat> and then we should see some of those. So here's a rule for probability distribution. So P of X is some probability. X is the random variable then if you add up, this is the summation sign, if you add up all the probabilities, it should equal 1. If you look at any particular probability, it should be between 0 and 1. So you can't have negative, you can't have something that has a higher chance of happening um, greater than 100%. This is um, an example of a table that matches with this problem, which we'll do some of those when we get there. Here's some more, and so you would just add up the probabilities. Some of them you can kind of look. This was a negative value, so that would not be a distribution. Um, here, if you started adding these up, it looks like you will be more than 100%. Um, this one looks like it might equal to 1. Then they talk about graphing them. So graph would have the probability on the left, and then number of success on the bottom or the count and then that line would just go up to the height of that percentage or that probability. So when we talk about the mean of a discrete random variable, the mean, so usually when probability, um, like if we ro talk about rolling a die, um, there's six sides, one through six, they all have the same chance of happening. However, um, there's a lot of probability scenarios where there's a different chance of things happening. So like this distribution, you have 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, 0 has a 0.01, uh, 1 has a 10% chance, 2 has 38% chance, and 3 has a 51% chance. So they all have a different uh, pr probability of occurring. <clears throat> to find the mean, you're going to multiply each value, x value, um, whatever that random variable is, each value times the probability, that's what this is saying, x times the probability of that outcome. And once you get those, you're going to add them all up, that's what this is, the summation. You're going to add up each probability times the random variable x or its number of times of occurring. And so that's what you're seeing here. You can also see the same thing in the table, 0 times 0 0.1, 1 times uh, sorry, 0 times 0 0.01, 1 times 0.1, and so on. And when you add those up, we get approximately 2.4. So this is the mean. Um, and so how do you interpret the mean? This is very important. 
So the mean can be thought of as the mean outcome of the probability experiment. So if we repeat this experiment many times, so it says if we repeat this experiment in example five of shooting free throws, um, how many times would we expect, <clears throat> um, we would expect uh, the mean number of free throws to be made to be around 2.4. So you can't make 2.4 free throws, but this is on average. Sometimes you might make uh, two, sometimes you might make three, but when you average um, how many they made, sometimes you might make one, sometimes you make zero. But anyway, when you average all the ones they made, it should be around 2.4. So we would expect somebody to make roughly two free throws out of this experiment. So that's how you interpret it. It's not telling you that's how many they're gonna make, but that's on average. <coughs> So this is uh, interpretation of the mean of a discrete random variable again. So X is a repeated experiment. Um, the number of repetitions is increased. The mean is uh, of the value of N trials will approach um, XU. So as we do this over and over again, um, <coughs> the expected value will approach uh, XU. mean for discrete so you just kind of see um, here's a table with a bunch of repetitions they add them all up and divide by 100 and they got 2.35 which is really close to 2.4 so that's what that's saying here <coughs> interpret the mean of a discrete random variable as expected value so because the mean of a random variable represents what we would expect to happen in the long run it's also called the expected value. So mean and expected value are the same thing, just two different uh, words or descriptions of the same. Um, <clears throat> here's an example. And this is what the formula is for expected value. E of X is expected value. Expected value is the mean. It's the same calculation. There's nothing different. <clears throat> the standard deviation of a discrete random variable is going to be given by this formula. So sigma is going to be equal to the square root of each x value minus the mean, the expected value. You're going to square that and then you're going to multiply that times the probability. So you're going to add all those up and then you're going to take the square root of all of that. <coughs> Here's another one. You do the x squared times the probability of x and then you would subtract the whole mean squared and you do the square root of that. This is the one that I would prefer. Um, it's almost like uh, finding the mean except you're squaring the x values and then adding them all up and you're just going to subtract the mean from that, the mean squared. <coughs> and then here we have some tables showing you um, those calculations and then some explanation of how to do it um, with technology the 84 and in stat crunch all right i think that is it so and then you also have some descriptions of how to find it in excel so after that we start practicing so let's jump over to my math lab and practice